Hello fellow user. In this video, I will show you how to use Infinite GUI plugin. There will be timestamps. For every part of the video, feel free to skip anything you already know. For starters, let's create a simple chest GUI, which will help you understand how to use the plugin. We can use the command slash GUI to open the main GUI manager. There is a bank menu as well as a simple admin panel to help you understand how the plugin can be used and what features it offers. Other buttons include System Menu Editor, Exit button, and Create New GUI button. We will cover the System Menu Editor later on this video. Create New GUI button to create a simple chest GUI. For this example, we will use chest as the GUI type, but you can choose whatever you require. Now we will type a unique ID for the new GUI. Now we are in the GUI editor, which has title editor button, row editor button, scene editor button, command alias editor button, GUI type editor button, set permission editor button, and delete GUI button. We will now edit the title to test title with color codes. As you see, the title has changed in real time. We will now edit the rows. To note, if you are not using chest as GUI type, you would not be able to change its rows. Moving further, we will set the command alias used to open this GUI. You can set it to whatever you like. I will set it to test, making the command slash test. You can change the GUI type with the GUI type editor, but we will not do that for this GUI example. We will now click on Edit Scenes button and create a new scene. A scene is basically a page that lasts for X ticks if it is not the last scene for a given GUI. This can be used to create animated menus. The plugin will automatically fill in an ID for the scene in ascending numbers. Now click the newly created scene to edit it. Furthermore, we will click on Setup Inventory to set the items for the menu. We will take an item from the creative menu to add to our GUI. Now we will use the command slash GUI exclamation mark exclamation mark to open the last known system menu. Place the item on any slot you want and right click the placed item to edit the item. The item cloner can be used to clone the item to another empty slots. Just click an empty slot in the menu to clone the item onto it and ESC to back out of the menu. As you see, the item have been cloned to the selected slots. We will now change the display name for the item to Super Special Sword with the color code for red color. The display name has changed, as well as you can preview the item within this menu as well. Now we will add enchantments to the item. I will choose some random ones. You may choose whatever you need. All the enchantments have been applied to the item, but it looks kind of filled on the lore, so we will check out item flags next. We will hide the attributes as well as the enchantments. As you see, the item flags has been added to the item. We will modify the item lore next. Let's add a few example lines to the lore. You can use the up and down buttons to change your selected lore line. As well as remove or edit the selected lore line. As you see, the lore has changed to the custom one for the item. You can change the material type right from here as well preserving most of the custom data when changed as well. You get the option to search for your specific item as well as clear the search if you don't need it. Let's toggle unbreakable tag for the item. You just have to do it once. 
I did it a couple of times to show you, we will also add the hide unbreakable item flag to hide the lore of unbreakable. You can customize the custom model data for the item, we don't need to do this right now but I will show you anyway. Set it to minus 1 to disable it. Further, we will click on the Modify Attributes button to create a new attribute modifier. As you may notice if you hide the attributes that there is an unknown attribute modifier already in place, this is a workaround for 1.20.6 plus but will be used on every Minecraft version. We will create a new attribute modifier to increase damage speed. Select Generic Attack Speed. Type whatever value you would like, I will use 100 for now, we can edit this later. This is our new attribute modifier that we just created. We can use Shift plus left click to change the operation. You can use left click to edit the modifier value. We will use 50 for this item, making the generic attack speed plus 50. Let's temporarily remove hide attributes item flag to show our change. We will turn it back on later. We will add a custom player head to the GUI. We will need a player head item for this purpose. You can get it from the creative inventory. Right click the player head after placing it in the GUI to open the item editor. Navigate to modify player head texture button and click it. You will now need to type the base 64 value for your custom texture for the player head in the chat. You can get this value from Minecraft heads website. And voila, there it is. We will go back to our main item to learn about conditions and click events. Navigate to modify click conditions and click it. As you see, there is a condition fail message that is sent to the player when they fail to pass any condition listed here. Let's create a new condition for balance requirement. Navigate to player has balance. Click it. Now you need to type the required amount in Anvil field. I will use 1000. As you see, the newly created condition has been added for the item. Now we will set up the condition fail message, letting the player know if they do not have enough balance to purchase the sword. Done. Now we will set up the respective click events for the item. Navigate to Modify Click Events and click it. Click Create Click Event. There are a lot of options to choose from while creating a click event. We will first select Close Open Inventory. Now we will do the same thing but select Give Custom Item this time. We will now set up the item accordingly, I will fast forward this process, you can configure this as you wish. Though, you cannot modify click conditions and click events for this item. We will now go back. We will do the same process for creating a click event once again, but this time select Remove Money. As we put 1000 in the balance required condition, I will use 1000 for Remove Money click event. The Remove Money Click event has been added. We are now finally done with a simple GUI. It contains some non-usable items and an item you can purchase. The sword we configured is purchasable. We can use the command slash test to open our simple GUI. We can click to buy our purchasable sword in the middle, though only if we have the required balance. 
As you see it takes 1000 from my balance. I will reset my balance to zero to check if the fail message is working all right. As you see, I can't purchase the sword anymore and the fail message seems to be working fine. I will give myself enough balance again. And I can purchase it again. The GUI seems to be working as expected so that's good. We will now go back to the click event manager for our purchasable sword and set up a purchase message that is sent to the player to make it look better while purchasing the sword. Let's add a message player, click event next. You can type the message you want to send to the player in the chat, I will just type out a simple one. And there we have it. We will now test the GUI again to make sure it works. And it does work. So that's awesome.